Thank you, Dirk. Uh, good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. Uh, thank you to uh, Dirk and the team for having us here today to share um, some of the latest trends um, in international tourism. Um, I know you have a lot of presentations today, so it's quite challenging to start talking about uh, this early morning. Um, I'm not going to say, obviously, how we were all um, hit by one of the most difficult moments um, over the past two years, but um, I think it's always good to remind us where we were um, and where we are at this moment. Um, we lost in the two years 70% of all international arrivals. Um, I always like to compare with the year of the economic crisis, 2009, when we lost 4%, and this gives us the magnitude of what the sector faced. Um, obviously, this was translated into a significant decrease in exports, which are critical for many, many countries, but also on tourism direct GDP. Um, we lost 50% the first year and uh, another 41% in the second year, and we're still um, far from the numbers that we had pre-pandemic. Um, there has been a significant improvement. I'm sure you all saw that in your own destinations, um, much actually quicker than anyone expected. The operational challenges we saw in many, many airports and many destinations this summer in the Northern Hemisphere was a reflection of the fact that recovery was quicker than expected. Um, if you remember in January, we were still struggling with Omicron, trying to understand what would be the impact, a new variant, countries closing again. Um, so um, we have come a long way in this uh, last months. Um, by region, um, there's obviously a very big difference, um, and this is a consequence of the coordination among governments to facilitate uh, travel with all the challenges. Um, and I must say here that the COVID uh, certificate in Europe has made a huge difference to the recovery and uh, recognize also Spain for its initial leadership in, in this initiative, which I think it's, it's really made a huge difference. We've seen also the Americas doing quite well because many destinations um, open earlier. And unfortunately, Asia obviously um, was still by July at minus 86, but also good news is many destinations and countries in Asia are opening in the last months. Um, and I'm sure that we will see the reflect of that in the numbers that will come for the, the coming uh, period. By regions, where are we at this point? Um, we've recovered globally almost 60% of all the volume of pre-pandemic, which is quite significant if we look at, back at the numbers. In Europe, almost 74%, so huge, huge recovery. Asia is still um, at 14% of the volumes that were there, and we all know China is still closed, and it's a very, very big market, both in the region, but also to other regions, and most of the region, Middle East and Africa, are also doing quite well. Um, I also wanted to share very briefly some of the tools that we have developed um, during the pandemic and which are still available, obviously, in our website. Um, the first one is the UNWTO Recovery Tracker. Uh, what we try to do, um, particularly in, in March 2020, is to see what data was around, what can we use to have an idea of what is happening um, in the market. So we partnered with significant number of different private sector uh, organizations, um, including IATA that provides us data on seat capacity, um, STR, which you might know, providing us data on the competency rates, uh, also um, AirDNA on the short-term rentals demand, uh, Google for travel searches, and um, uh, RCI for travel sentiment. Uh, for us, and uh, following the quote that Zaritza uh, mentioned, not everything that's measured counts, but when you are in a crisis, it's really important to have different points of reference that you can look at to better understand what is happening. Um, and we have seen over time that many of those indicators actually um, are a reflection of what we see afterwards in terms of the real data that comes from the countries in terms of international tourist arrivals. Um, another uh, information that's available for who is interested in our website is the monthly data from the countries. Um, we collect uh, monthly data on international tourist arrivals, international tourism receipts and expenditure. And this information um, can be used to benchmark the different countries 
um, by month where the recovery is, but also uh, to understand better uh, what is happening in the different regions. Um, so this is an example of um, our host country um, in terms of their arrivals compare month by month until July, and you can do the same for all the countries. We also keep um, monitoring the travel restrictions related to COVID. Uh, we partnered with IATA uh, also to understand what was happening. If we all remember, um, there was a change daily almost on, on the restrictions um, and the requirements to travel. Um, so we created um, a portal where you can actually see for each country what were the requirements uh, changing day by day, but now we're very happy that we've been starting to focus on the destinations which are opening up, um, and we already have almost 100 destinations worldwide where there's no COVID-related restrictions. That means no need to fill any um, document, show any proof of testing or vaccination or any other kind of requirement. We all know that um, there's challenging times ahead. Um, we all know the impact that the war in Ukraine is having in our economy. Um, it's enough to open the news every day to look at how inflation is looking like. Uh, but I think it's really impressive when we look at the numbers. It's not something happening only in Europe, uh, all the OECD countries, USA, but also Asia is, is suffering from increased pressure on households. And although demand has been very resilient up to now, um, I think we need to be very vigilant because um, the, the economic situation and the prospects in the short term are much more challenging than they were in summer. There was also a lot of pent up demand uh, for two years. So I think uh, we might be uh, heading to a slowdown of uh, the pace of recovery that we were seeing. Um, this is somehow confirmed, but still very early to, to see. Um, in the UNWTO Confidence Index, um, this is a survey that uh, we run with experts around the world on a regular basis. Actually, you can see the, the information since 2007. Um, before the last quarter, uh, we actually recovered the levels of 2019 for the first time. Um, and when we ask the, the panel what were their prospects for the last quarter of 2022, they were slightly down again. Um, so again, I think this confirms that we will probably be heading into a slowdown of the pace of recovery that we have seen. Um, overall, um, our scenarios indicate that we'll probably end the year at global level between minus 30 and minus 45 percent. Um, in terms of international tourist arrivals, uh, we will see how um, the rest of the year goes, but we do know that August and September um, are being extremely strong. Um, so we, we are confident that we will be uh, around this scenario. Uh, this is all from my side. All this information is our, in our dashboards and um, every detail that you might want to ha have afterwards. I'm here and happy to contribute and uh, very happy to learn as well from the different um, measurements and tools that are using uh, in the different instos, um, because I think they're also very valuable for us to learn from and to advance at UNWTO. Thank you, Dirk, and thank you all, and have a very good meeting.